Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, I'm talking about Radiant Photo. We'll take a first look at a new photo editor coming to market very soon. And you might go, okay, another photo editor. Do I need another photo editor? And that is a fantastic question to ask. That's what you should ask all the time when you're thinking about something new for your photography. And in order to answer that question, do I need this thing? You need to understand what the thing is that's why I have this video here. I want to talk about Radiant Photo, what it is, what it isn't, why I think it's interesting and why you might want to take a look at it for your photography. And I'll show you a little bit of the interface some pricing and availability information as well. Uh, as far as screenshots or like snippets of video that I show of Radiant Photo here. Uh, this is a pre-release that I'm working with and so the interface may change and features might might slightly change before they release the full product. So just keep that in mind if you get the product and it looks a little different than what you see here. That's why. So let's get started. So first, what is Radiant Photo? Well, It's an AI powered photo editor. It edits photos. That's its job. That's what it does. And its goal is a well-exposed, tonally balanced image with minimal effort on your part. You still have total control. You can adjust things and so forth. But if you bring a photo in, the software looks at it, it understands objects, it does a pixel-by-pixel -pixel analysis to figure out the right settings, applies things and gets you like an 80 to 85 percent of the way with your edit maybe in some cases you're just done so it achieves its goal very well and I, I see this fitting into workflow for a variety of photographers and I'll get to that a little bit later in this video why should you look at this thing uh, what else about the the basics of radiant photo runs on Mac OS, runs on Windows, it's a standalone application, or it can run as a plugin to Lightroom, Photoshop, Corel's uh, Paint Shop, and um, that's really the, the fundamentals of it. Uh, it. It does lead into then the next question, which is, if this is a photo editor and that's what its job is, well, what does it not do? So what Radiant Photo is not is it's not a Lightroom replacement. It's a photo editor. It edits photos. It doesn't do asset management or metadata work or printing module. You know, none of that stuff there, right? You bring the photo in, you edit it, you export it as some other photo. It is destructive. It doesn't save the settings in a catalog or so forth. A caveat to that is if you run Radiant Photo as a smart filter in Photoshop, you get some of that re-editability courtesy of Photoshop smart objects but otherwise it is a destructive editor. Um, it is a, a single photo editor, meaning this isn't doing panorama stitching or focus stacking or HDR or layering, things that involve multiple photos. That's not what Radiant Photo does. Its goal is bring a photo in, make an edit, make it really good out of the shoot, and move on to the next photo. And you can batch things through it. You can do that. You can take a set of photos, throw them all at Radiant, let it do its magic, and have them export. Uh, but you're not doing a compositing work or anything that involves multiple photos to fuse together into a single image. So uh, you know, a key takeaway when you're thinking about, all right, Radiant Photo, uh, does, this, does this have a place in my workflow? It's going to be, in my opinion, one tool in your toolbox, not the only tool in your toolbox. You know, it's um, it's the type of editing tool that is in addition to other tools that you have. It's not in replacement of some tools that you have. So keep that in mind. That's a, that's an important factor to understand. Radiant Photo edits images. That's its job. And again, I think it does a very good job at doing that. So let's look at a really quick example here. You know, a photo, you bring it into Radiant. You know, what does it, you know, what does it do? Uh, what happens? You, know, you load it in and it says it's making your photo Radiant. And after a couple of seconds, you know, it's kind of done, right? And so here we are. I'll just hold the space key down for a moment. This is what came in. This is what happened, you know, automatically. The software detected this is a landscape scene. It applied some smart editing to it. And of course I have control over these things. And honestly, with the smart editing, there's a couple of other tags here like depth. I like this a lot because look what happens with the mountains and the grasses. Those get uh, 
nice and uh, you know crisp in the foreground. The sky gets a little little uh, happier there. Light diffusion. This is another one that helps kind of smooth out shadow areas, and I can adjust these things. But that's a what a couple of clicks, and I went from here to here, right? Or you look at the slider here, and that's fantastic right out of the gate. So you know that's an example of a very quick edit in Radiant Photo. Now, will I do more to this image? Of course I will. I'll bring it into my other tools and I'll do my finer tuned work, but I didn't have to spend the time to balance this photo. I mean, go back and look at this again here before where, all right, there's some, some shadowy areas. I need to raise the, the, the shadows some and this and that, and you know, like, you know, auto buttons in Lightroom and other software will do a pretty okay job. But then after I didn't have to do any of that. I didn't have to do that work. Uh, I didn't have to mask the sky. I didn't have to worry about trying to remove some stuff from the midground or so forth. Do I have other tools that can do that? Sure. But th th for me, one of these, you know, one of these reasons of why I would look at Radiant Photo is if you're working with images and you need to get results quickly and with minimal effort. Uh, which actually brings me to uh, kind of the next stage of this is, you know. Why, why would you look at this software? Where do you use it in your workflow? What are some good reasons to have Radiant Photo? You know, um, I think that it fits for several types of photographers. Uh, and, and some where it's, I need to have photos quickly. If you're doing client work, for example, and the client says, you know, I just want to see everything that you shot and then I'll decide what's going on. Well, you'll need to do some level of editing for that because you know you're not going to just hand over your raw images you'll need to do some level of editing and you know auto is okay in in you know uh, in in lightroom i certainly use it uh, you know and on one other software i certainly use the uh, the the auto buttons but it's usually not enough and i wouldn't want to hand those over to a client i can push everything through radiant give them those things then they can make their selections and then I'll go back and do the finer tuned editing on the images they want. Uh, another example is if you are someone who is a creative, you need photography for your work, but you're not a photographer. You know, maybe you're a content creator and you need good images to accompany your, your blog, your marketing material, whatever it may be. Radiant Photo might be a good fit for you. An interesting use case that I find uh, very, very useful with Radiant Photo is when I have a set of images that I want to have a very similar look. I want this kind of look on all the photos. I can bring them in through Radiant and what, what Radiant Photo does very well is it gets me a good baseline. And these photos, you know, if I have a set of images and they're not all taken from the same location, the same day, none of that, but uh, you know, lighting conditions, all different. I can bring them through Radiant and it normalizes everything. And it's been doing a better job than just using auto buttons. I get results faster. I get that consistent look that I want. And it's um, a much more conducive workflow to apply a particular style. And I want to do a separate video on this one specifically because it's a little deeper than I can cover in a, uh, in a first look kind of video. One other use case is a finishing tool. I was very surprised that an image that I kind of thought I was done with, and then I said, oh, what happens? I push this through Radiant Photo, and it got even stronger as an image. I just found it more compelling, more powerful. And so uh, the, uh, the, the opposite end of workflow, I've been talking about workflows where you know you, you start off with the unfinished image, and you, know, you get to be nearly done and push it through other tools. The reverse could be true as well. So you know, those are some of the reasons why I would look at Radiant Photo. Uh, and if any of those match your photography, well then you know, maybe this is a tool you want to consider uh, to add to your toolkit. Let me return into the Radiant Photo interface and just give you a couple of little more pointers about a tour of, uh, of the, the software. Uh, again, I think I'll do a deeper video on a, on a larger tour of it. You know, here's the quick edit interface. You kind of saw that there was some auto detection that happened. 
Now you might look at this interface and go, hey, isn't this perfectly clear? Haven't I seen this software before? Well, if you've used perfectly clear uh, by an IQ, then yes, you have. This is the you know, next evolution of perfectly clear. And actually, if you go to perfectly clear's website, you'll see that uh, they're, they're steering folks to Radiant Photo for the next iteration of this. So um, it, I, I view this actually as, as a good thing. This is a new photo editor, but it's not like, all brand new shiny new code which means all brand new shiny new bugs there's uh there's a very stable foundation for the software but uh, let's get back into the interface you can click on detailed edit and a lot more shows up right? there's a lot more happening on the left hand side these smart presets these are the things that get detected and you saw earlier if i go back to quick edit you saw landscape was the detected uh, photo type that's like this right here and then I made tweaks to it so if I clicked on detect you'll notice those sliders change because uh, I've, I've reset the detected thing and I had said oh, I want some depth I want some light diffusion so I added those things in there are also presets so you can bundle up a collection of settings and and put them into your own presets that's true too uh, an interesting thing about the smart presets is you have your own smart presets and what these mean is you can select any of these categories and the settings remain the same or the the the, the categories the types auto radiant landscape and so forth but you can have your own version of landscape so the next time you load a landscape photo radiant photo will say oh you want to use your smart preset fine if i detect it's a landscape i'll use your settings instead of the default settings so it's not um it's not like fully automated training of the ai but you get some additional control over what happens when the ai says this is a landscape or this is an animal it can choose your settings not the software settings and then there's a whole bunch of other things on the right hand side we have tone we have you know color changes fidelity is a very interesting slider this tries to keep the colors true to form you know based on what would we really see in my case right here nature you know what would it be would it be like you know darker and more contrasty i found this to be a very interesting slider if you have tint it'll tell you if tint has been detected you can turn it off or on there's sky toning there's foliage toning for both the foliage as well as like the, the the trees you know the branches or so forth or in this case the grasses and there's you know sharpening there's some noise reduction uh, and so on down the line there are graduated filters of the pretty minimal uh, types of settings here it's really mostly for vignetting and for the uh, very hardcore old school you do have finishing tools your very classic kind of your your basic adjustments there uh, on the right hand side uh, there's a couple of other uh, tool panels here as well you have things for portrait uh, I'm not a portrait photographer but you can take a guess is selecting faces doing changes to eyes and skin and then you have some color grading options and there are a whole slew of different styles that are built into the software you can add more looks if you want to do color grading color grading gets interesting when you consider radiant photo as getting you that baseline that level set across a set of images and then you want to have a consistent look uh, which happens to include color grading so um there's you know there's uh, more to the software for folks that want to use radiant photo as uh, either a starting editor or as like the editor that's going to get me a photo that I'm ready to use for whatever other creative content you're working on uh, for the photographers in the audience where this is something that I'll use in conjunction with other tools you know maybe you're not using these other panels here you're just leveraging the AI power that's totally fine too that's really up to your workflow so but, uh, this is what's going on in the interface I think I'll do a, a deeper video about more of the specifics of these panels here so uh, this first look doesn't become <laughs> doesn't become my opus <laughs> on Radiant Photo. Let's talk pricing and availability. Radiant Photo will be available on September 15th, 2022. So that's just a couple of weeks away as this video posts. Very, very close. The retail price is $129 US and that is either the standalone product or 
the plugins. So think about how you might use Radiant Photo in your workflow. And if you're thinking about using it with other software as a plugin, get the plugin bundle, don't get the standalone. Uh, there is a, a, a combination pack, like a bundle for $159, which includes both. And uh, they're doing something with um, the Radiant Toolkit, which is you know an optional service. And for the first year, they're, they're just giving it to you. Uh, it's software assurance. So anything that is shipped within a year, you get it for free. So if they, they release a, a, a newer major version, and they also give you $15 a month to spend in Radiant Store. So think, you know, presets and looks and, you know, it's a credit that you can spend in their store on whatever you want. It's not like they decide, we're giving you this. It's here's $15 credit. Go get whatever it is that you'd be interested in. And it's also a perpetual license. So this runs as long as your computer meets the minimum requirements. Maybe you can run it on up to two computers. So, you know, once you purchase it, it's yours to keep and run for as long as you like. Uh, there is also a pre-order option where if you order before the ship date, you get the bundle of both the plugins and the standalone for 129 US. So what about software updates? That's a question you should always ask yourself when you're getting new software. What's the update strategy? I wanna look at my notes to make sure I get this correct. So there will be updates for OS changes, new raw formats, and there's a six month purchase protection. So if you were to buy it, let's say you're watching this video in the future and you say, wow, this looks great, I'm gonna buy it. And a month later, a new improved version of Radiant Photo comes out. Well, you're within that six months of your purchase, you get the new version for free. So that's that's pretty cool. Uh, so that, that's nice. Um, and the, the folks at Radiant are telling me that they're not aiming for an annual cycle on updates. This is one of those, they wanna have something and then just iterate on it for a while and then do another update at some point in the future. I think we'll just have to see how that plays out, what the, what the cadence becomes for that. Uh, but you know, that, that sounds intriguing and appealing to me. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out. So 129 for Radiant Photo, you do the pre-order, you get a little bit more for the same price, 30 day money back guarantee, perpetual license. You buy, you own it forever. And that price point, I know that it feels a little high or it can feel a little high. And I've thought about this quite a bit. And the way it resolved for me was, well, I have tools in my toolkit that do singular things. I have pl a plugin that will sharpen my photo or a plugin that will resize my photo. And those individual plugins, you know, sometimes cost between 80 and $100. And they do this one thing where Radiant Photo is a lot more versatile. Uh, I can use it for some of the use cases I've talked about in this in this uh, video here, I can use it for photo genres that I'm not particularly strong with. Like if I do street photography or food photography, I, I, I don't necessarily know where to begin like I do with my landscapes. I can put them into Radiant Photo and just let it do the work. Uh, so it's not a, a singular tool. It doesn't do one thing. It does many things. It has a singular goal. Get me a well-exposed, tonally balanced photo but it can do that on a broad spectrum of photos. So uh, I can encourage you to think about that when you're considering, you know, does Radiant fit into my workflow, my ecosystem? And I think the price point is, is fair given what it can deliver for you. So to wrap up this first look at Radiant Photo, you know, it would be hyperbole for me to say, oh my gosh, this is the most amazing software ever and you can't live without it. That, that, that would that's, that'd be false advertising, honestly. But what I do believe about Radiant Photo, the pros, it is solid technology and it's proven technology. This isn't something brand new. This is, you know, based on perfectly clear from IQ. It's used on, you know, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of images every, every hour, uh, you know, uh, across the world. And it does achieve its goal to get you that well-balanced, you know, exposure just right out of the shoot with minimal effort and giving you the control to change things and fitting into 
your ecosystem of tools. So it's uh, it's very fluid and it, it flows just like you would expect it to if you are going to be continuing to say use Lightroom as your hub or Photoshop as your hub. You know, the, the software will work where you work. The, uh, the, 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 the cons it really may be that the price point can be a little dear depending on what you're expecting to get out of Radiant Photo. Uh, that is is what the price is, and you know, you'll have to judge that based on your photography and what you need from a tool like Radiant Photo. And maybe neutral would be, how's the update cadence going to go? Now, this is a, a new iteration, and so we'll have to see how the updates flow. Based on my conversations with the folks over at Radiant Photo, um, I'm expecting good things. I really do have a, a good vibe from the folks there that they are, are eager to put out a very solid product, keep it up to date. And I think their particular focus on let's make photo editing our core competence, that's really going to help them achieve that goal. They're not, they're, not, they're not spreading themselves out too thin by also trying to do asset management and printing and this and that and the other thing. So, uh, so that's, that's it. If you've got questions, uh, feel free to leave uh, comments below and I'll do my best to answer. And I'll try to come back with uh, another couple of videos about Radiant Photo, digging in a little deeper on, uh, on some other areas of the technology. And until then, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.